In history, there's been more than enough examples of governments abusing their power. However, with the democratic 21st century, there is no place for an all-powerful branch of government. So to further understand one of the most important branches of a government, let's dive into the legislative branch of one of the most substantial world power, the United States of America. So, what is the United States Congress? Well, first of all, the Congress is divided into two parts, the Senate and the House of Representatives. They're both located in Washington, D.C., the nation's capital. The Funding Fathers designed a check and balance a system inside the U.S. government to ensure that no one branch of government would grow too powerful. So, let's go ahead and start with the U.S. Senate. The Senate is made up of two senators per state, accounting for a total of 100 senators. To be a senator, one must be at least 30 years old, have been a U.S. citizen for nine years, and live in the state they represent. Senators represent the state's position and interest in crafting legislation. Each senator serves for six years. However, there's no limit to how many terms they can serve. Let's get another look to the other part of Congress, the House of Representatives. It is made up of 435 members. The number of participants in the House is ruled by the population of each state, which is counted every 10 years by the U.S. Senate a population count that determines the number of representatives per state. For example, California has 53 representatives, while the state of Montana, which has a much lower population, has only one. Each member can only serve two-year term. The intention of the Funding Fathers was that the House would stay close to the people, while the Senate would have some place in order to be more delivered body. The Senate is much different from the House of Representatives. Only can they confirm presidential nominees, accept treaties, but only can the House write bills that spend money. Both the Senate and the House are very different, and the procedure of this body requires the Senate and the House to pass a law independently before it is presented to the government. The two bodies convene and create a merge version. Now, we can't forget that there are three branches of government. And to be able to deeply understand how the legislative works, we must look on how it interacts with the other two branches of government. So let's go ahead and look at the executive branch and their interactions. Well, first of all, to comprehend it, we need to understand that the job of the executive branch is to enforce the laws. But the president also has the power to propose and veto laws, which forces him to work with the Congress to pass the laws he wants. Also, Congress oversees the presidential execution on laws because they have the power to impeach him in case he's abusing his office. Now, since the job of the judicial branch is to interpret the laws, it can overrule the decisions that the other two branches make by deciding if a law is constitutional or not. So to recap, the legislative branch of the U.S. is Congress. Congress is made up of the House of Representatives, which has 435 members, which are chosen based on population of each state. The other side is the Senate, which is made up two senators per state with a total of 100 members. The job of Congress is writing laws, declaring war, approving treaties, and confirming presidential appointments. Also, they have the power to impeach presidents. They are fundamental parts of the operations of the United States. It is one of the most complex and substantial parts of the United States government.